We have opened pretty much at the pre-opening levels. Well, it's a great start to the week for the markets as well, powering ahead above 10,850 for the Nifty. The Nifty and the Sensex up uh, about six tenths of a percent. The Sensex actually outpacing the Nifty a tad. After a 1% rally that we had uh, last week, there's some follow-on buying and in fact, just in the last 10-15 minutes, we've piled on our gains. Which ends down about 1.5%. That's the closing bell and we're done for the day. 79 lower as far as the Nifty is concerned. Markets start the week with healthy gains, outperforming Asian peers by a big margin. Nifty flirts with 10,900, Sensex gains more than 300. Kodak Mahindra Bank slums about 3% after the Bombay High Court refuses to stay the Reserve Bank of India's 31st December deadline, which asks Kotak to dilute promoter stake. Other private banks end in the green. Vedanta surges after the National Green Tribunal approves the reopening of its Tutikor and copper smelter. Regulated power players like NTPC and Power Grid separately also rallied after draft tariff regulations keep the return on equity for these companies unchanged. The expectations were that the regulated returns would be cut. Tata Motors surges after reports suggest JLR will cut 5,000 jobs in 2019 to save 2.5 billion pounds. Shares of Jet Airways end in the red after former CEO who was roped in to revive the airline quits yet again. Quality hits the lower circuit after reporting a weak set of second quarter numbers. <coughs> Credit Suisse bets big on investment-related stocks over consumption-related ones, says that an improving relative uh, price-to-earnings uh, price ratio should support industrial performance. Neelkan Mishra of Credit Suisse expects a meaningful and sustainable CAPEX recovery. Well, those were the top five headlines from Daral Street on a day when Indian shares far outpaced their Asian peers. We rose alone. In Markets Today Talk Back, we are going to uh, delineate all that happened in those six hours of trading in just five headlines. I'm Lata Venkatesh, with me, my colleague Prashant Nair. Hi, Prashant. Lata, hi. So, I mean, you know, with today's gains, it's 5% from last week's lows on the Nifty. So, this is. Uh, from 10,330. You know, absolutely. Place. I mean, so it's a, it's, a, it's a big run that we've seen so far. Uh, over the next 30 minutes, as Lata pointed out, we will talk about the top five stories which mattered uh, and they moved stocks as well. Our guests will take your questions. Joining us to do that uh, are uh, Deepan Mehta, member BSC and NSC. And the technical side, we've got Mitesh Thakkar. Deepan and Mitesh, thanks very much for joining us here on the show. But before we start the Q&A session, let's quickly take a look at what really happened in uh, today's session. Remember... Uh, Friday, we were down, I mean, the, at least the US markets were down 2%, but well, nothing of that evident right from the word go, the market looked quite okay. Another. Uh, yes, sir. actually global markets have not been a very big help. We saw the weekend uh, uh, close of Wall Street uh, rather dismal, uh, 500 points knocked off uh, Dow Jones. Uh, Asian markets in the morning were a little better, uh, but uh, there were... Uh, you know, where there was green, it was a light shade of green. Europe still looking very, very red. So clearly, India stood alone. Now, what stood out for it, what perhaps is working for Indian investors is an expectation that there could be a bit of fiscal stimulus, a bit of banking regulated monetary stimulus, large liquidity doses in the economy and election-related spending, which usually spurs consumption. There is also a feeling that there is an ongoing CAPEX cycle, which will anyway keep, uh, you know, some of the capital stocks like LNT uh, well hydrated. So that was the pattern that worked today. Uh, fiscal and, uh, uh, stimulus, uh, probably in the form of a bank capital, capital for banks, uh, uh, monetary stimulus in terms of the RBI bringing down some PCA rules. All these expectations coming out of two major reasons that happened last week. The government losing three state elections, <coughs> therefore trying to be a little more active in fiscal and uh, uh, regulatory stimulus. And the Reserve Bank having a new governor who apparently, from the optics, is more amenable to discussion and may loosen a few rules. So that's the uh, theory on which the market is working and it was a many-sided rally. Anything that would benefit from a lower cost of capital was up and about. So no sector favourites at this point in time, except perhaps you can say private sector banks. 
other uh, than Kotak Mahindra Bank, all of them did well. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, so maybe private sector banks and the PSU stocks did very well as well. Uh, we'll get, we'll get to that. So this is the stock list. I mean, first, as always, pockets of uh, uh, sort of gains, metals, energy, and uh, CPSE stocks uh, did very well. I mean, those, those are the top uh, gainers today. Tata Motors, the Nifty first. Tata Motors, Power Grid, HDFC, Coal India, Hindalco, JSW Steel. Uh, by far, some of the big gainers. Not uh, necessarily by how much they contributed, but just by absolute percentage gains. The Lagards, Kotak Bank, we'll discuss Kotak in a bit more detail separately as well. Infosys and Bharti were down. Okay, PSU stocks, BEML, Barmalori, Dredging Corporation, STC India, MMTC, that entire pack, Container Corporation, that entire pack of about 10 stocks, up anything between 5 and 15%. Uh, no particular reason. One theory, of course, is that they could be, I mean, this is as a result of expectations of large buybacks from the government, dividends. I mean, we saw another dividend from Coal India, for that matter, mm. in the closing hour. Broader gains in Bandhan Bank, Ircon, Rights India. Uh, there was Surya Roshni, huge volumes in that one. Cash stock, no, we don't see it moving like this, but it was up 10% plus. Kaya, I mean, it had halved, uh, basically. Uh, it's, it was up uh, back to more respectable levels. Bombay dying. There was Neil Kamal and the life insurance stocks. I mean, actually, SBI Life and ICICI Pro were up uh, between 4 and 5 percent. HDFC Life was flat. So, just a, a sample of what really moved. Lata. Motley Group, I mean, all yeah. kinds of stocks went up. Okay, on that note, let's invite our guests and ask them what they have made of the market moves. So, first, Mitesh, uh, uh, what's your sense? So, you know, uh, pretty close to 10,900. Uh, you said that once it uh, goes to this level, 10,950 should be easy. That's right, Lata. I think getting past 1,830, 850 was the... We opened that uh, gap above that level. We did spend a few hours sideways, but I think overall the tone was set for the day to possibly end stronger. Uh, 10,940, 950 is the area where we had peaked out on the uh, in the first week of December, then the big fall to about 10,330 happened. So that's an important high. I think you will see some profit booking coming also is the fact that by the time we reached there, we would have covered about 600 plus points from the lows of 10,330. So profit booking will happen. I think around uh, 10,940, 950, again, expect a few days of consolidation, two, three days is what, what my guess is. And then I think if we don't break on the downside, then I think eventually we are setting ourselves for a test of 11,050 to about 70 on the upside. Okay. All right. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, let's uh, get to the second headline. Shares of Kotak Mahindra Bank slumped over 2% in trade after the Bombay High Court refused to stay RBI's 31st December deadline to the bank, uh, by which it has to dilute the promoter's stake from 30% to 20%. The court will now hear the matter again on 17th of January, well past the deadline of 31st December. Other private banks, however, were in the green at the end of the day. Okay, just a word on this uh, Kotak Mahindra issue. Uh, the bank is in a bit of a pickle. The uh, 31st December deadline, uh, you know, there is no relief from the court before that. The court is going to hear them on Jan 17th. Even if they hear them, uh, usually cases like these go on for anything from six months to uh, two years. They can't be in violation of the law for that long a period which means Kotak Mahindra has to bring the stake down. It's also in a little bit of a problem because it can't negotiate with the central bank when it has just taken them to court. So in the very least, it has to withdraw it. Maybe that will be one solution or it can go to a higher court and take a special leave petition, in which case it spoils its image with the regulator even more. So uh, it's a bit of a piquant situation. Now, the argument could be that the promoter is not uh, a regulated entity. Kotak Mahindra Bank is a regulated entity. As a regulated entity, it has to expand its capital so much that the promoter's stake comes down. It has to actually issue capital worth over 1 lakh crore rupees. Only then Kotak, uh, Uday Kotak's stake comes down to 20%. Now, what would you do with 1 lakh crore of capital? I mean, that kind of dilution. Yes, mergers are options, but you don't do mergers in 10 days. And to be fair, Kotak Bank has been a willing acquirer for a very long time, but uh, may not be getting its price. So, this is definitely going to be a very interesting legal, political and regulatory situation. We don't know how it will uh, evolve. Perhaps uh, with uh, a new man at the helm in RBI, it will be a little easier for the bank uh, to start a new chapter with the new man and open negotiations. That looks like the best route. Okay, uh, so that is the uh, Kotak story. It's a developing story. We have a question coming in uh, from a viewer. Kishore Thakur has 50 shares of Kotak Mahindra Bank. His purchase price is 1,020 rupees a share. 
and he's asking if he could uh, if he should hold on or sell uh deepan uh, let me take uh, get this to you kotak bank what's your view I think clearly uh, the prospects of the bank are not going to get impacted by whatever uh, decision the, the promoters take or that RBI takes with regards to dilution or non-dilution of the equity of the promoters. I think it's business as usual at Kotak Mahindra Bank. It's been a great wealth creator, a secular and structural growth story, uh, and the recent turmoil in NBFCs uh, certainly benefits Kotak Bank. they are sitting on huge liquidity and i uh, would be easily able to expand their uh, credit book at attractive rates uh, given the kind of scenario which is there in the banking industry so i don't think the investor needs to worry a bit too much about his holding in kotak bank if at all the, the stock corrects because of any adverse news on account of uh, this promoter dilution it may provide an opportunity to get into the stock or even average upwards uh, from from his price point so i would say best to remain invest in kotak bank it's been a great uh, it has a great track record and going forward also we believe this company can easily grow anywhere from 15 to 20% consistently for at least 3 to 5 years or so okay very quickly uh, uh, deepan you know when uh, if the, the bank is in a situation where now the promoter has to bring his share down uh, do you think that there is a bit of a distress sale involved at this point in time and therefore there is an overhang on the stock So I think it's anybody's guess, and it's a blue chip company. I think they should be easily be able to find buyers if the promoter was to liquidate his 10% holding. And we have been getting a lot of news uh, and rumors that they are in talks with major uh, investors for stake dilution as well. But whatever the case, maybe this hangover or this liquidity overhang doesn't last for too long. And if Kotak Mahindra keeps coming out of the numbers the way it has. Uh, there are always more and more buyers uh, at every level as we have seen so i wouldn't be too concerned about uh, any sort of major selling uh, uh, by the by the promoters having an effect on the overall stock price uh, of kotak mahindra bank so i think it's an event which will uh, play out your guess is as good as mine but the underlying fundamentals remain strong and that's where we should as investors focus on okay mitesh that where are the charts here so i think uh, you know it looks like the stock has completed a very big up move which started in uh, november 16 at about 700 price levels and it has gone into longer term consolidation so i'm not looking at correction but i think the recent lows of about 1100 uh, actually below than that but on a monthly closing we never close below 1100 so uh, about 1100 would be a good support area on the upside 1350 would become a rise and i expect uh, at least two to three quarters the stock could be in this 200 point to 50 point kind of range Okay, so that is uh, Kotak Bank. We move on to the third story. Vedanta zoomed close to up about two and a half percent in trade this after the Green Tribe, the Green Court, the NGT reversed Tamil Nadu government's order of closing the company's Tuti Gorin plant. Remember, the Tamil Nadu government had ordered closure of the plant, uh, the copper smelter, in May after violent protests over alleged alleged uh, allegations of pollution. Speaking to CNBC TV, Atin Sirlat Copper's CEO P Ramnath said. that they are, they are pleased with the ngt decision and expressed confidence that they can restart the sm smelter in uh, the next one to two months listen in the the ngt uh, judgment has been very very positive for us and uh, it has directed the pollution control board to uh, reissue the consent to operate within 3 weeks of the judgment date and it has also directed uh, the district administration to give us access to the plant which we've been denied for the past 6 months now once we get the uh, access uh, it will take us uh, maybe about a month or two to get the plant back into shape and uh, so that how we can do a safe restart well other power stocks like uh, power grid and ntpc also got a leg up in trade after the release of the draft tariff regulations these regulations which will be applicable for 5 years keep the return on equity unchanged for ntpc and power grid versus expectations that they would be cut anisha jain with more 
Well, yes, the draft tariff regulation for the regulated power producers, that is NTPC and Power Grid, were released over the weekend. Remember, these will be applicable from FI 19 to 24 onwards. And the final policy will only come out in the month of January or February. But nonetheless, the key highlight of this draft tariff regulation was the fact that the ROE was maintained at 15.5%. The street expectation was that there would be a cut of around 1 to 2%. And that could have impacted the profitability and profit margins of these companies that has not come through and that's the relief rally that we saw we saw in stocks today separately the efficiency norms have also been tightened now this is a bit of a double-edged sword while it is better for the entire sector that the efficiency norms have been tightened it might be difficult for all these companies to actually achieve those targets and hence the incentive income might take a bit of a hit and that's the reason Bank of America Merrill Lynch has actually said that the net impact of these tariff regulations is negative and they have cut down the target price both for power grid as well as NTPC. But other than that, all the brokerages like CLSA, Edelweiss, Reliance have seen this as a positive move and that's the reason these stocks reacted positively and were holding up 2 to 4 percent higher in trade. Back to you. Okay, we got a, a question. Derek D'Souza from Mumbai has written in with a question on Vedanta. He's been holding 10,000 shares of Vedanta at 264 rupees a piece. He's a long term investor wants to know if you should hold or sell. Uh, 10,000 shares of Vedanta, cost is 264. I think uh, he's underwater, price is just above 200 rupees. Uh, Mitesh, technically first, how is it looking? From 350 to about 190. Yeah. We still haven't got a reversal signal just yet, but I think now the longer term indicators are flattening out, suggesting that the decline could be over. So I think 190 might hold. And on the upside, while you might not get an immediate big upside, but I think 240, 250 should be tested. So in that sense, I would suggest a hold. He can take a fresh view once the stock is closer to about 245, 250 zones. And 190 should be the reference point on the downside. Okay. Gentlemen, we'll take a break. Uh, but uh, uh, before we do that, uh, how are markets poised in 2019 since that's an election year? Mm. Uh, we have some interesting views from Sham Shekhar uh, of I Thought and Govind Parikh of Govind Parikh Securities. Uh, we're back in the From one bull market to another, the leading themes tend to change. Of course, you have the evergreen stuff like consumption, but there have been bull markets in which consumption has also done badly, and there was an opportunity there. If you see the current bull market, I think the opportunity lies in basic industries and capital goods, because they have not participated since 2008. You have not seen much of capital formation in these industries. Asset creation has slowed to virtually stand still. You have seen that the banks lent money and assets went bad. So we are only spending the last five years uh, trying to clean up all this. Coromandel is growing very well. Fertilizer industry, I mean, uh, I think the problem in fertilizer, I mean, I can talk at length on that. It may be boring for everybody, but fertilizer, basically the policies have to change. The phosphatic fertilizers and urea, urea is subsidized and phosphatic is not subsidized. So government can do that in the first year. It's very difficult to raise the urea prices, you know. So once that happens, this coromandel become a, you know, huge story. It may happen, you know, in the next government comes to power. Welcome back. You're with us here on Markets Today Talk Back. Uh, we got through three of the top five stories. We move on to the fourth headline of the day. Among stocks that moved in trade today, Tata Motors was the one which surged 4% after reports suggested that Jaguar Land Rover will cut 5,000 jobs in 2019 as part of a three-year cost-cutting program. This job cut is part of the company's plan to save £2.5 billion to offset the likely impact due to Brexit. Decreasing sales in China and poor demand of diesel cars. Okay, shares of Jet Airways too ended the day close to 4% in the red. This after reports suggested that uh, Nikos Kardiasis, the former CEO of Jet Airways, has stepped down once again and parted uh, ways with uh, the company. Remember, he had made a comeback to the carrier in an advisory role and was tasked with the turnaround of the cash-strapped airline. Quality hit the lower circuit after reporting a very weak set of numbers for the second quarter. It reported a net loss of close to 1,000 crores against a 21 crore profit year-on-year. -year. Revenues too took a beating 
at 351 crores. Okay. I thought there would be a question on uh, jet, but the question is on quality. It is on uh, quality. Mark from Mumbai has written in uh, with a question on quality. He's been holding 1,000 shares of the company. His cost is 157 rupees a piece. He's been holding the stock for the last two years mm. and uh, wants to know what to do. Price is uh, 8 rupees. I mean, this is a tough one. Uh, Deepan, uh, any way out of this? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a penny stock and uh, I think there's permanent uh, damage, permanent loss of capital over here. So one can only sympathize with the investor. You could just keep it uh, and hope for the best. But I, think, I don't think there's much scope for... Mm much future for a company like this after what has happened so i would say it's best to either knock it off or just hold it i think the decision is not that material given the price point yeah absolutely okay uh, there's no point uh, belaboring on this stock uh, further let's get to the fifth headline and see if there are more questions that we can handle there uh, that's the last headline credit suisse has released a fresh report laying out their big theme a preference for investment-related stocks over consumption on the basis that an improving relative P.E. should support industrial performance. Caught up with the author of this report, Neil Khan Mishra of Credit Suisse, and he expects to see a meaningful and sustainable CapEx recovery. Contrary to consensus view that the government has been responsible for the pickup in CapEx, Actually, the government uh, uh, sector has been investing at the same pace uh, for most of the last seven, eight years. So the GFCF to GDP from the government side, the public sector side, has actually been flat. So, uh, so, it, so the, the pickup that we are seeing is not really government. Steel capex has started. Uh, our view remains that power capex also in two, three years will start off. So I think that this is setting the ground for a very meaningful and sustainable recovery investment activity. Peak demand, peak utilizations have actually shot up. So, so what we are tracking is 62, 63% utilization at the average level. But the moment you uh, look at peak utilization, you're already in the 70s. And our demand is rising at 6%. So in, in three, four years time, you are going to need more capacity. And if you're going to need three, uh, capacity in three, four years, you need to start setting it up now. So, uh, and I think that realization is not there in the market. I and mean, people are worried about receivables for power gen uh, sort of equipment companies and, and for power generation companies. But uh, the business reality, the, the economic reality is that you need more power. Oh, I wish we could have taken some questions on that. We need more power and uh, Credit Suisse has a buy on BHEL. So that would have been an interesting discussion, but uh, out of time, we will do that on another day with Deepan and Mitesh. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, thank you for being with us on Markets Today Talk Time.